The benefit of learning for country in terms of from a whole school perspective definitely is about um, fostering like connectedness and belonging to each other, to the land and to the community more broadly. I think it's really nice being able to know about the history of your community and, you know, the, the cultural significance of, you know, your school emblem. Education 101 is that if they can see why what they're learning is relevant, they'll be engaged. And so much history that we do is medieval Japan or World War One. And while some students might have ancestors in those histories, often they're disengaged because they're like, why are we learning this? Why are we learning this? Why do I do algebra? When am I going to need this in my life? And when you can contextualize it so locally and so specifically, they are much more engaged because they're like, oh, that person from that place that I know or that place, now I know the history of it. So part of it is that I feel much more confident talking, not only talking about Aboriginal cultures and histories and experiences, but also delivering that in a way that uses Aboriginal knowledges. So thinking more about how I'm presenting information. So things like using place as a tool for learning and seeing that, that and understanding that for my Aboriginal students, that is a that is how they learn. That is how they've learnt through their family and through their experiences. And so absolutely, it's helped me to understand the backgrounds of Aboriginal students better. And it's also given me some room to think about how it interacts with my very, very multicultural school as well. Um, for these students, place is so important to them because they come from so many different places. They understand what it's like to feel connected to a place. It might not be a connection to country in the same way that I feel it or other Aboriginal people feel it, but it is still a connection to place and being able to connect with them on that level and being able to draw those kind of similarities and connections. It's been really empowering. And I think for the students as well, it's made them see that it's not so different to them. It's not different. There are similarities and that really piques their interest as well, I find. So I think the concepts of learning from country that we've addressed really tie in with the overall message of why you're doing education and what you should get out of an education degree. Because at the heart of it, learning from country is about understanding where you are and having relationships with other people and being able to teach in a way that's very specific to your context. So essentially, it's about you know understanding the school you're at, the students you're teaching, what they need from you, and how you can best respond to them. One of the benefits of doing this learning from country experience is it does really make you critically analyze your identity as a teacher, the education system as a whole, and how you interact with that. You have to actively be involved in kind of dismantling the aspects of the system that are causing harm and creating issues for people. And you have to be a really proactive agent for change and you know, challenging the aspects of the curriculum that are bad or that don't accurately reflect what's going on. And you have to be an agent for change in you know, the way that you interact with your students and the way that you connect with the school community and ensure that whatever school you're working in, that you're there as a positive force and that all the students are respected and included in the community and that you're doing it with these ideas of, you know, almost the social justice perspective of using education as a force for change and to improve our society. I think especially if you're an Aboriginal student, being able to feel like the teacher acknowledges and respects your identity, they see who you are and they make an effort to actually address your culture and to incorporate that into their everyday teaching and learning. It's a really powerful tool to show the students that you care and that you understand what, like, what everyone is there for. And you're able to adapt the learning experiences to ensure that everyone is included. Everyone feels like they have a safe space to go to. Um, which also, if you're a teacher, that is, that is like the ideal of what you want to create in the classroom. You want all of your students to feel excited about going there. Being involved in a program like this benefits myself and my family and my community by being able to engage in the difficult parts of the conversation and do it in a really constructive way. Um, that's something that I know my sons are doing, so they actively have conversations with other people when they come in, into contact with racism, which you know, is very is done in a very casual way in this country. And so they have tools to be able to engage in those conversations, which then benefits everybody. We get the comments like, oh, it had nothing to do with us, so get over it. Um, you know, you're trying to blame us for all of this that's happened to, commu you know, to your people and all this kind of stuff. But it's like, no, you just need to have these understandings. This is where that truth telling comes into it. 
And you need to hear these stories from our community members, from our elders, from our cultural educators, from our community leaders, and really, you know, from our children and our young people as well. There's a lot of trauma that sits there, you know, when we think about the colonisers and what they did, you know, to us as Aboriginal people in this country. Those learnings need to happen and from that everybody gets to heal. Everybody gets to learn and move forward in such an enriched um, and wonderful way. I think this kind of process is so much more important than, say, Reconciliation Week, for example. I think the power play changes and everybody comes to the table or sits in community in those yarning circles as equals. And that's, that's a wonderful, you've got really good examples such as the Mile Creek Committee, the Mile Creek, the, you know, that committee that deals with the, the Mile Creek massacre um, every year when they come together and acknowledge that anniversary of that. When you look at non-Aboriginal people and Aboriginal people coming together and learning from each other and trying to grow and move forward together, you know, they're incredible stories that people can hear. So it's not about us putting shame or guilt or anything on non-Aboriginal teachers in this space, it's actually about you need to hear these stories because this is going to benefit our children who sit with trauma as a result of colonisation. Because, you know, particularly when you think about when people say, I'll just get over it. And it's like, well, we can't get over it because it's still going. And people need to actually understand that. Yeah, and I think when people say just get over it, it's a good opportunity to sort of help people understand how white privilege works. Um, and, you know, even though they may not want to take on the guilt of what previous generations have done, make them understand that they have a role in changing things going forward. And it's a really important role. Uh, so if they're not really engaging with our communities and not really engaging with our cultures and engaging with our information and our version of, of, of history, then they're sort of re-traumatising all over again. So, you know, make them fully aware that they do have an active role in making things different. As part of the Learning From Country course, I attended a talk um, from some, uh, presented by some men from the Kinchella Boys Home who talked about their experience as part of the Stolen Generations. Um, and obviously this is a history that I'm very familiar with, but to hear those words from these men and everything they'd gone through and their strength and their resilience and their bravery in sharing that story was just incredibly moving and difficult, honestly, even though it's a history that I know to really see those impacts and to see the ongoing impacts um, was difficult, but ultimately really, really important as well. And I know that every student in the room felt that way as they left as well. It was incredibly <laughs> somber and serious on the way out, but some of the conversations I had with those students, um, maybe not right in that moment, but afterwards, after we had a chance to process that, really shows the power of letting people, having people tell their story and listening to those stories. You know, it is obviously so important to explore what has happened um, and all of those really, really atrocious things that have happened to Aboriginal people. But it's, um, from my perspective as well, I really, really want to give the kids a balance of so much has happened before this. This is such a long and beautiful culture that we should be celebrating, which is what I really got from learning from culture. And I think it really allows them to become part of the solution because they have this like understanding of how it connects to them and to their, their country and, um, and the Aboriginal people.